Hi, I'm Sean Gannett, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about find the domain of a function defined by an equation. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Okay, so domain and range together, all right, they kind of, they do come together, and it's really a function there. So here's a nice little graphic. We have the domain A, B, and C. They go through some, what we call the function machine, and you get an output, some range, x, y, z. So that's really kind of the relationship. We take a domain, put it into some function, and then out comes the range, okay? All right, so one thing we need to learn or talk about here for domain, and you may already know this, is, well, interval notation, okay? Interval notation. So if we have Here's a nice little figure here. We have an inequality, it's interval notation, it's graph on the number line, and it's description. Let's kind of go through this fairly quickly. If x is greater than a, then we have parentheses around a and infinity, okay? And we can see a uh, is everything to the right of a, right? It's greater than that. x is greater than a. If a is, uh, x is less than a, we have negative infinity to a with parentheses, and it's kind of like the opposite. x is less than a x is greater than or equal to a, we have brackets where the a is, but it's still then greater, so x is greater than or equal to a. If x is less than or equal to a, similar idea, bracket over the a, but then we have uh, negative infinity there. a is less than x, which is less than b, we have parentheses a and b, and we see x is strictly between a and b. If a is greater than or equal to x, which is and then less than b, we have a bracket on the a part there. Very similar before, but there's a bracket on a, showing that a, x is between a and b and includes a. Similarly, we have a is less than x, which is less than or equal to b. We have a parenthesis around the a, and then the bracket for the b, and x is between a and b, but it includes b. And lastly, a is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to b. We have brackets on both a and b, meaning that x is between a and b and it includes a and b there, okay? All right, so let's go through a little example here. Number one, all right? And we have the following uh, order pairs, okay? All right, we have the following order pairs and we want to find the domain. All right, we want to find the domain here. Well, the domain is going to be the input. So the domain are all the input values, the x values here. So the domain is a set of numbers. The x values 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And that is our domain, the set of the x values. So it's not, not too difficult, all right? <clears throat> what if we want to find the domain of a function? So let's say we're given this function here, too. I'm going to find the domain of here, f of x equals x squared minus 1. So really what we're looking at here is saying, okay, our domain, what value are we allowed to plug in for x, right? In a lot of cases, there's no restrictions there. We can plug anything we want in x. We can put negative infinity, or <laughs> negative 100, let's say, positive 100, zero. There's no value that we're not allowed to plug in for x here. And so our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Really, that's saying that's all real numbers. Any real number out there, we're allowed to plug into this equation and we get some output, okay? So this one's kind of tricky in a sense like that, but that happens quite often, where our domain is gonna be all real numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? All right, so now let's go with a little trickier one here, number three. We wanna find the domain again But we have this function, f of x equals x plus 1 over 2 minus x, okay? All right. Well, what really restricts our domain here? What's that denominator? We know we cannot divide by 0, 
We cannot have zero in the denominator. So we want to see, okay, what x values cause that. So we take the denominator, 2 minus x, and we set it equal to zero. Subtract 2 to both sides, minus x equals minus 2, and x equals a positive 2. Multiply both sides by a negative 1. Right? So if we plug 2 into our function here, we get a denominator at 0, and we can't have that. So what they're telling us here is that, okay, x can't be 2, but it really could equal anything else. Okay, so x can be all real numbers except for 2, and so we can show that like this. We have negative infinity to 2, union 2 to positive infinity. And what that's saying is that our x value can be any number from negative infinity to 2, but not including 2, because there's a parenthesis, and then from 2 to infinity, but not including 2 as well. All right, and so we can also see it on a number line right here and see how it's just all the numbers except for 2, and there's an open circle there at 2. All right, let me go erase this. Well, actually, I can do the next one. I can fit it in here. Number 4, same idea, find the domain. When we have f of x equals the square root of 7 minus x. Okay? All right, so we have this, and we know that inside the square root, 7 minus x, it has to be greater than or equal to zero. We're not allowed to have a negative number inside a square root. If we do, that's imaginary. So what we're looking at, we take the seven minus x, and we say that value, whatever it is, has to be greater than or equal to zero. All right, so now we do everything we can. Subtract seven to both sides. Let's solve for x here. We have a negative x is greater than or equal to negative seven. Multiply both sides by a negative one. What does that do? Remember, flips the inequality. We have x is now less than or equal to a positive 7, okay? So x can be less than or equal to positive 7, and that is our domain. So we have negative infinity to positive 7, including 7. We can equal 7. It's okay to have a 0 inside the square root. But our domain here are all the negative numbers, right? Negative infinity to positive 7, including 7, and that is our domain for values that work. If you try, let's say, put 8 in for x, 7 minus 8 is negative 1, square root of negative 1, mm, can't do that, okay? So let me go erase this and we'll dive into the next part. All right, so now we're going to use uh, notation here, we're going to talk about that, to specify domain and range. So let's look at this chart right here, or table. Notice in the first one here, we have from 5 to 10, h can be there, so 5 is less than h, which is less than or equal to 10, and notice the graph. We have an open circle at 5 and a closed circle at 10. If we write that as set builder notation, it's 5 with a bar, so such that, uh, or sorry, h such that 5 is less than h, which is less than or equal to 10, and interval notation is parenthesis on the 5, comma, 10 with a bracket, okay? And when it kind of moves on down, there's all these different examples there. It shows if we go to you know, negative infinity or positive infinity, how we would show each one of those. So take a moment, look at that, uh, and refer to this if you need to. The last one I want to talk about is you can see the all real numbers at the bottom. Notice the number line goes both directions from negative infinity to positive infinity. It's, uh, and the quality notation is all real numbers. The set builder notation is that R symbol. It's like the double bar an R, it kind of looks like this, if I can help it on the side, like that, okay? And then interval notation is from negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? So take a note of those values there, you can kind of see that uh, through. All right, definition here. Set builder notation and interval notation. Set builder notation is a method of specifying a set of elements that satisfy a certain condition. It takes the form x bar statement about x, which is read as the set of all x such that the statement about x is true. For example, x such that 4 is less than x, which is less than or equal to 12. Interval notation is a way of describing sets that include all real numbers between a lower limit that may or may not include an upper limit that may or may not be included. Hmm. The endpoint values are listed between brackets or parentheses. 
a square bracket indicates inclusion in the set, and a parenthesis indicates exclusion from the set. For example, parenthesis 4, comma 12 with the bracket. Okay? Well, how do we see that here from a number line? So we're going to describe from this number line. So number 5 here. And you should see a number line up there. Okay? So this number line, what do we see? Well, we see from 1 to 3, there's the blue line. And we have closed circles there at 1 to 3. At 5, we have an open circle. And then it goes the blue line to the right forever. So how can we write this? Well, if we have it as in the inequality, we would see this as such. 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3. That shows the closed circle dots. Or x is greater than 5. There's two sections there. x can be greater than 5. If we set builder notation, we have all values of x such that 1 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 3, or x is greater than 5. If interval notation, We have the brackets from 1 to 3, union, parentheses, 5 to infinity there, okay? Which one's your favorite? I, I either like inequality or interval notation. Those are my favorites, but if you have a favorite, let me know down below. But now we have our basics there, okay? Well, you saw a little number line. We can see the interval notation, set filler notation, and inequality, okay? So the next part, I'm actually going to quickly erase this, and we'll go dive into the next part. All right, for this next part, we're going to talk about the domain and range from graphs. So let's look at this first graph we see right here, okay? You notice we have the blue line, and the blue line kind of looks like a uh, cubic function, and it's kind of it's curved, and but... Notice that there's a closed dot in the upper left-hand corner, right? and then it curves down to, down to the right and kind of goes on forever. Our domain's in orange, and our domain has that closed dot there showing that it exists from there, but then it keeps on going forever to the right. Our range starts at the highest value there at uh, 5, right? so the y value of 5, and it goes down to negative infinity. And domain started at negative 5 and goes all the way to right to positive infinity. Okay? All right, so let's go through an example here. I'm going to see this graph, number six. Okay, so we want to find the domain and range of our function f, which is shown in our graph. Okay, well, what do we notice? It starts to the left and goes to the right. We have an open circle and closed circle. So what do we observe there? Okay, well, we observe that we're going from negative three to one on the x values. So the domain we can say, okay, negative 3 to positive 1, and the bracket is on 1. What about the range? Our range value here. Well, the highest value that we see, okay, is 0. And what's the lowest value? Is negative 4. Negative 4 is hit twice, right? In the first bottom of the cusp, and the bottom, and, the, and at the end point there. So our lowest value, lowest value first, negative 4, to the highest value. Now, this is tricky here, okay? It's kind of hard to see, and it's kind of up to uh, interpretation here from the image. But notice that the range, okay, the range, we have the closed circle at the beginning, that's at zero. But then on the right, it looks like it hits the graph itself right there, right at the top, right? It's at zero. So I'm going to say that this zero here is included. Okay, and we include that zero there, the high part of that range. Uh, hits that zero there. Uh, I believe the textbook says no, and I guess they're assuming that that line doesn't hit the origin. I say it does, but I'll show the image here for what you can see, but I would say it's a closed circle because I think it does hit the origin there. If it didn't hit the origin, origin then that would be a uh, parenthesis right there. Okay? All right. So let's go to the next example here, and I'll quickly erase this. In number seven, we want to find the domain and range here 
for this graph, the Alaska crude oil production. We have years uh, on the x-axis and 1,000 barrels per day on the y-axis. So what's the domain and range of this graph? Okay. Well, the domain's kind of easy, right? Our years range from, well, looks like 1975, but looks like a little bit less than that. So we'll say our domain here, it ranges from 1973, let's say, it's roughly maybe 72. It was less than or equal to T, which is less than or equal to, and it goes all the way to roughly 2008 that we see on the graph, okay? And if I was a teacher, I'd give or take a year there. It's kind of hard to tell. Now the range though, the range, what's the, the lowest value and the highest value that you see, okay? Well, we see the lowest range of thousands of barrels per day, and that looks like it's just below 200, so let's say about 180, so 180 barrels. And let's say, I think it hit that, it looks like it did. It's less than or equal to the highest value that we see, uh, which looks about two, a little over 2,000, so say 2,010, is that right? Close enough. Again, if you're a, if I was a teacher, or your teacher, I'm looking at, you know, you giving some ranges here, there's a, there's a little window that I accept. If you said under 2,000, I'd say no. If you said 2,000, I'd probably say no, because it clearly goes just above it. And same thing with below 200, it clearly goes a little below there, okay? All right, so that's like a real world example. You can find domain and range from the graph here. It happens in real life. Well, I hope you found this video informative and you learned something. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math videos for you and for everyone else. And as always, thanks for watching. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help, you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help, you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com